Hello everyone, this is Dr. Priya Sipaha. My topic for today is General Exception under Indian Penal Code 1860. This is the second part of General Exception. In my first video, I have explained General Exception only excusable part and the justifiable part is in this video. So let's start. I have already explained the meaning of general exception in my first part. I'm making a quick revision of it. The law offers certain defenses that exculpate criminal liability. These defenses are based on the premise that though the person committed the offense, he cannot be held liable. That means all the factors are indicating that the person has committed a crime, but still there are certain general exceptions out of which a person cannot be held liable. These general exceptions have been explained under Section 76 to 106 of IPC. Section 6 of IPC explains that every definition of an offense, every penal provision and illustration should be understood subject to the exceptions contained in the chapter titled general exceptions there are two types of general exception the first one is excusable and the second one is justifiable the excusable general exception i have already explained in part one and uh, justifiable general exceptions are in a different sections of ipc the first one is judicial act mentioned under section 77 to 78 the next is necessity section 81 consent section 87 to 90 communication is section 93 juris is 94 traveling act is section 95 and private defense 96 to 106 the first general exception is judicial action mentioned under 77 which is related with the act of judge it describes that nothing is an offense which is done by a judge when acting judicially in the in the exercise of any power which is or which in good faith he believes to be given to him by law that means if a judge is sentencing a prisoner to death even wrongly it will be considered at a as a decision not a crime because at that particular time he is acting as a judge and that is a part of his duty next is section 78 which is act done pursuant to the judgment or order of court it describes that nothing which is done in pursuance of or which is warranted by the judgment or court of a court of justice if done why such judgment or order remains in force is an offense notwithstanding the court may have had no jurisdiction to pass that order or judgment provided the person doing the act in good faith believes that the court had such jurisdiction for example if a hangman who hangs a prisoner pursuant to order of the court he is committing no offense section 81 necessity this describes that nothing is an offense merely by reason of its being done with the knowledge that it is likely to cause harm if it be done without any criminal intention to cause harm and in good faith for the purpose of preventing or avoiding other harm to person or property the essential elements of section 81 are in a sudden and extreme emergency if two evils are inevitable and the person is forced with a choice of evils and chooses the lesser one and if he acted to prevent imminent harm with reasonable anticipated a direct casual relationship between their conduct and the harm to be averted and he had no legal alternatives to violate the law then this defense can be used but this defense cannot be used to commit a crime for example in dudley versus stephen the accused was siemens their ship was capsized in a storm they along with a boy about 17 years of age managed to float on a wooden plank they continued to drift for many days without food and drinking water. When death by starvation of the three was almost imminent, they killed the boy and continued 
to eat his flesh for a few days when they were rescued. On being prosecuted for murder, they pleaded that self-preservation was the utmost necessity and they had no option except to kill the boy. Both accused were held guilty of murder and their defense of necessity in the form of self-preservation of life was rejected and they were sentenced to death. The next general exception is related with consent which is mentioned under section 87 to 90 which explains that under what condition consent may be pleaded as a defense to a criminal charge that is when the harm caused to the consenting individuals should not be punished in the interest of the community. First of all, it is necessary to understand what is not a consent. When a consent is not such a consent as it is intended by any section of this code, if the consent is given by a person under fear or injury or under a misconception of fact and if the person doing the act knows or has reason to believe that the consent was given in consequence of such fear or misconception or consent of insane person, if the consent is given by a person who from unsoundness of mind or intoxication is unable to understand the nature and consequence of that to which he gives his consent or consent of a child unless the contrary appears from the context if the consent is given by the person who is under 12 years of age. That means what is not consent first given under the fear of injury or misconception of fact. Secondly, given from unsoundness of mind or intoxication and thirdly given by person under 12 years of age section 87 deals with act done by consent which says that nothing which is not intended to cause death or grievous hurt and which is not known by the doer to be likely to cause death or grievous hurt is an offense by reason of any harm which it may cause or be intended by the doer to cause to any person above 18 years of age who has given consent whether expressed or implied to suffer that harm or by reason of any harm which it may be known by the doer to be likely to cause to any such person who has consented to take the risk of that harm. Section 87 is based upon the maxim volunteer non-fit injuria which means he who consented cannot complain. So the ingredients of section 87 are every person is the best judge of his own interest. No man will consent to what he thinks harmful to himself. Generally, this type of consent is given in the sports such as fencing, boxing, football and the like and protected under this section. For example, A and Z agrees to fence with each other for amusement. This agreement implies the consent of each to suffer any harm which in the course of such fencing may be caused without foul play and if A while playing fairly hurts Z, A commits no offence. This section extend protection in those cases only where harm is caused in good faith and for the benefit of consenting party. For instance, intended to protect the interest of doctor, etc. This immunity will not justify causing death or grievous bodily injury or harm likely to cause death and which is known to the doer. The restriction is absolute and unconditional. Section 88 is also related with the act not intended to cause death. That means any act is done by the consent in a good faith for person's benefit. It describes that nothing which is not intended to cause death in an offense by reason of any harm which may cause or by intent by the doer to cause or be known by the doer to be likely to cause 
to any person for whose benefit it is done in good faith and who has given a consent whether expressed or implied to suffer that harm or to take the risk of that harm for example if a surgeon knowing that a particular operation is likely to cause the death of z who suffers under the painful complaint but not intended to cause z's death and intending in good faith z's benefit perform that operation on z with z's consent a has committed no offense the next is section 89 which also described about the act done at good faith for the benefit of the child or insane person and the consent is given by the guardian it says that nothing which is done in good faith for the benefit of the person under 12 years it authorizes guardian or other person having lawful charge of first the child below the age of 12 years and second a person of unsound mind who are not competent to give the consent in law to consent to inflict harm either himself or by another person provided it is done in good faith secondly for the benefit of such minor person of unsound mind and the act is not either immoral or illegal until and unless the act is done for the benefit of the child and insane it is allowed but it cannot be claimed in four situations covered under the four provisions first intentional causing of death or attempt to cause death second consent to the doing of anything likely to cause death for a purpose other than prevention of death or grievous hurt thirdly causing or attempting to cause grievous hurt except for preventing death or grievous hurt or infirmity for instance causing grievous hurt to a child under section 322 of cr of ipc and lastly abetment to commission of any offense for example if a father intending monetary benefit to the child of 15 years abets b to commit rape on the child neither father nor b could be within the exception the next general exception is related with the communication made in good faith mentioned under section 93 which describes that no communication made in good faith is an offense by reason of any harm to the person to whom it is made if it is made for the benefit of that person this section gives protection to a person from criminal liability for making a communication to one which results in harm to him to claim this protection under section 93 there are certain conditions the first one is the communication must be made in good faith secondly it must be made for the benefit of the person for example if a surgeon in good faith communicates to a patient his opinion that he cannot live the patient dies in consequence of the shock a has committed no offense though he knew knew it to be likely that the communication might cause the patient's death but he was performing his duty and he was doing a act in a good faith section 94 tourists this states that except murder and the offense against the state punishable with death nothing is an offense which is done by a person who is compelled to do it by threats which at the time of doing it reasonably cause the apprehension that instant death to that person will otherwise be the consequence provided the person doing the act did not of his own accord or from a reasonable apprehension of harm to himself short of instant death place himself in the situation by which he become subject to such constraint for example if a smith is compelled to take his tool and he is forced that the door of the house for, for the decoy to enter and plunder it then he is entitled to the benefit of this of this exception section 95 
trifling acts. This section states that nothing is an offense by reason that it causes or that it is intended to cause or that it is known to be likely to cause any harm if that harm is so slight that no person of ordinary sense and temper would complain to such harm. This section is based upon the maxim de minimis non curit lex, which means the law will not take care of trifles. The ingredients are it intend to prevent penalization of negligible criminal wrong or offenses of trivial nature. Though such act fall within the communication of the law, they are not punishable within the spirit of law. Such acts are considered innocent. For example, to take a sheet of paper from others' drawer, pressing a man and causing hurt while getting into a railway compartment, and calling a person a liar, though it attracts defamation. The next general exception is very important, that is private defense, which mentioned under section 96 to section 106 of IPC. General instruction and essential of private defense is described from section 96 to 98 and general restrictions are defined under section 99. Right to private defense of body is described under section 100, 102 and 106, whereas right to private defense of property is described under section 103, 104 and 105. Section 96 of IPC defines that nothing is an offense which is done in the exercise of the right of private defense. Although this section provides right to private defense, but still it cannot be used abruptly. There are certain essentials which need to be there while accessing this private defense. These are right inherent in man, which is the duty to help himself. Right is exercised when there is real and immediate threat. If life is threatened by grave danger, need not wait for state aid unless aid is available. Right is protective or preventive and not punitive. It is not for self-gratification. It should not be deliberate or for retaliation of past injury. Right commences as soon as reasonable apprehension of danger arises and continues till the apprehension continues. The protective measures must be proportionate to injury or threat. The right ends with the necessity of it. The aggressor cannot claim the right to self-defense. No private defense against private defense. One who goes to beat the other cannot claim the right. And lastly, even if private defense is not claimed, court may consider the plea based on material on record. Section 97 and 98 describes about the general essentials of right to private defense. Section 97 says that every person has a right to defend his own body or of any other person against an offense affecting the human body. Thus, even a stranger may defend a person or property of another person. Whereas Section 98 says that to exercise the right, the physical or mental capacity of the attacker is no bar, whether with or without mens rea. Section 99 of IPC describes about the general restrictions on right of private defense. It says that there is no right of private defense against an act which does not reasonably cause the apprehension of death or of grievous hurt if done or attempted to be done by a public servant acting in good faith under colors of his office, though that act may not be strictly justifiable by law. Secondly, there is no right of private defense in cases 
in which there is time to have recourse to the protection of the public authorities, extent to which the right may be exercised. And thirdly, the right of private defense in no case extends to the inflicting of more harm than it is necessary to inflict for the purpose of defense. Next is right of private defense of body. Section 100 describes about, about the right of private defense of body when this right extends to causing death. The right of private defense of the body extends under the restriction mentioned in the last visiting section, that is section 99, to the voluntarily causing of death or of any other harm to the assailant if the offense which occasions the exercise of the right be of any of the description hereinafter enumerated, namely, Assault causing apprehension of death, assault causing apprehension of grievous hurt, assault with intention of committing rape, assault with intention of gratify unnatural lust, assault with intention of kidnapping or abducting, and assault with intention of wrongfully confining a person. There are certain conditions to invoke section 100. These are that the person exercising the right of private defense must be free from fault in bringing about the encounter. Secondly, there must be an impending peril to life or of great bodily harm. Thirdly, there must be no safe or reasonable mode of escape by retreat. There must have been a necessity for taking the life. Section 101 says that in other circumstances, the defender may cause any harm except death. Whereas Section 102 says that right commences as soon as reasonable apprehension of danger to body arises and continues till the apprehension continues. Section 106 says that in case of reasonable apprehensions of death, if defender cannot exercise the right without risk of harm to innocent person, he may even run that risk. Next is right to private defense of property. Section 97 says that every person has a right subject to the restriction contained in section 99 to defend his own body and the body of any other person against any offense affecting the human body. The property, whether movable or immovable, of himself or of any other person against any act which is an offence falling under the definition of theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass or which, in, which is an attempt to commit theft, robbery, mischief or criminal trespass. Section 105 of IPC is a commencement and the continuation of the right of private defense of the property till, in case of theft, till offender has effected his retreat with property, assistance of public authority is obtained or property is recovered. In case of robbery, if offender causes or attempts to cause death, or hurt or wrongful restraint or as long as fear of instant death or instant hurt or instant personal restraint continues. In case of criminal trespass or mischief, as long as the offenders continues in the commission of criminal trespass or mischief and in housebreaking by night, as long as house trespass which has begun by such house breaking continues, this protects the continuation of the right of private defense of property. Section 103 of IPC related with the right extent to causing death if robbery, house breaking by night, mischief by fire to any building, tent or vessel used as human dwelling or as place of custody of property, theft, mischief or house trespass under circumstances causing reasonable apprehension of death or grievous hurt can be availed as a 
private defense of property. Similarly, section 104 states that in other cases, right extend to any harm other than death. These are some of the sections related with right to private defense of human body and property with some of the general restrictions mentioned under section 99. So this is all about the general exceptions justifiable under IPC. For detailed notes, you may visit to my website that is priyasipaha.com. I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.